Captain's log, date February 28th, 1943. The USS Sailfish is slowly cruising to the island of Guam. The approach so far has been more or less stress-free. No surface contacts have been detected, and only one lone zero was spotted about eight hours ago. However, I fully expect the Japanese defenses to increase as we approach the Mariana Islands. In the meantime, we'll be conducting frequent drills to make sure the crew stays sharp during these long periods of downtime. Hello everybody, Wolfpack here, and welcome back to more Silent Hunter 4. I'm patrolling off of the waters of Guam here, as you can see, and we completed our assigned objective, but I wanted to stick around a little bit. So I just plotted a course pretty much just around the island of Guam, and I have detected something, a ship heading south-southeast, and its speed is medium. Uh, we did pick him up on radar first, so there is that. Also, the weather is fairly choppy out, which can either help us or... Uh, be kind of a pain in the butt depending on what the ship is it could be a destroyer this close to Guam so we need to be careful about that let's go ahead and kind of turn towards them and let's bump our speed up to a uh, standard here however I have my doubts that this is a warship due to the lack of zigzag movements and such he's kind of just sailing in a straight line it's probably is it is not smart uh, at least I would not recommend that. So he's at about 290. Let's see if we can spy him. Let's see here. It is very dark out. Is there even a moon? I don't think there is any moonlight tonight, so. Again, good for us. However, it is going to make it a little more difficult to spot him. I'm going to go ahead and go down the periscope depth in the meantime. Periscope depth. He is still pretty far out, however, so I think it's a good time to go ahead and dive to periscope. Yeah, let's go ahead and raise our periscope just so uh, my crew might have a chance of spotting him. Yeah, let's ahead full. Let's close this gap. He is still pretty far out, and my plot, my immediate plot, was obviously a little off. We shall correct that all momentarily. Alright, hydrophone operator, can you follow my contact, please? So he is indeed a merchant. Aha, and there he is. Oh, wow, what is that? Okay, that is interesting. He has a very long smokestack. And I can't really make out his cranes. But he looks very long. Like a Hakashiria, Hakashiki, oh my god. Hakushika, Hakushika, maybe. Oh boy, I butchered that one. I didn't, I did not even do a good job. Like, that is pitiful. That might be him there. Really hard to see though. So we'll find out. He looks nice and big, however. Alright, let's bring up my stopwatch, lock on, mark please, and let's go to the map and mark down his position, it was about there. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. Alright, alright, should be good here. Does he have... Razzle Dazzle camouflage on him? He does, it looks like. Cool. Okay, well, that's interesting. Was not expecting that. He is flying the uh, merchant flag, so he's not a warship. Alright. Well, let's go ahead and uh, get his speed. He is rocking in these waves as well. I'm sure the waves are causing him issues. All right, we're at two minutes and uh, closing in on three now. Three, zero, seven, Might be some sort of troop transport. I do think I have him identified correctly, though. Possibly. <laughs> I guess I'm not too confident in that because I'm looking at this back superstructure. I can't tell if that's just cargo or that's part of the actual ship. All right, lock and go and mark. 
All right, let's see, what do we got here? Nine knots? Oh, I think it's going a little faster, let's see. 11 knots. Copy that. Oh, well, shoot my forward two torpedoes at him. Let's see, what's his draft? 28 feet. I'll set my torpedoes pretty shallow. I'm not going to use magnetic torpedoes uh, on this guy. Especially uh, due to their irreliability. Unreliability, I guess I should say. Alright, close that out. And we shall lay in wait for our merchy friend. Oh, there we go. Looks like we have him spotted. Oh, yes, come to me. He's done for. This is perfect, honestly. All right, hello. It looks like hmm, I might have him identified wrong. Okay, well, I have a better look at him right now. And I might have to pause the game real fast because I got to get my rice. I have rice cooking on the stove and the timer's about to go off. Uh, anyway, let's try <laughs> no one cares. Let's try to identify this first. Man, I... Hmm, I'm not sure. I think it, that could be him. He's not smaller than one of these little peep squeaks. Bio Maru? No. 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 Wait, go back. Hog Island type freighter. Hey, that might... That might be him, because he has this weird funnel in the back, and the structure looks similar. Just keep looking. I think I'll uh, clock that in, though. Alright, timer's up. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with the Hog Island type freighter, and I will be right back. Alright, so I've locked in Hog Island Sock Freighter. We'll need to use tube 1 and 2 for this attack for, well, obvious reasons. We are facing him. Let's go ahead and start ranging this fella out. Mark his range. Speed we established was 11 knots. Mark that in. And AOB will be updating that. Let's go ahead and set up our torpedoes. They should already be set up. I need the offset angle to be at 0 though. Torpedo depth will set to, let's see, if draft is 15 feet, let's just set it to 6. Or 7. I don't want it, the warhead to smash into these waves and explode. Or anything crazy like that. That would be most annoying. Alright, and now we lay and wait. Now we just lay and wait. As he races by. Alright, we can probably go ahead and slow down now. No need to be heading full. Okay. Alright, let's get one, a couple more readings. One more. Mark that in. AOB. It's getting nice and, nice and good looking now. Alright, probably should prepare to fire now. Alright, opens tube 1 and 2. Looks good. Looks good. Alright, last range reading now. Plug that in. Mark. Tube 1. Fire. Tube 2. Fire. All right. Thirty seconds. Constant distance. All right. Twenty seconds. It's looking good. Oh yes. 
It does do look good. He is accelerating, I think, but it is too late. Those are going to smash right into him. Bam, one. Oh, wow. And uh, it looks like I only needed one because one torpedo just broke this boat in half. I'm sure, that, I feel like this is just like a, an old World War I freighter. Because, mostly because of the paint scheme and like the deck. I could be wrong though. I don't know anything about the Hog Island type freighter. But that's just kind of my guess. It looks very, it looks old. But, at last she is no longer. That ship is not getting repurposed at all. <laughs> okay, so we only have two torpedoes to play with. And, uh... Well, I figure might as well expend them while we're here, right? And then head back home. So let's continue on course. Good job, boys. That was a nice, successful attack. So we have two cuties, but I don't, I don't need to use those. Those are situational. And yeah, she is definitely going down, engulfed in flames. Two was probably overkill in retrospect, but I'd rather put her down immediately than have to chase her around the world and her having the possibility of escape. That was pretty brutal though. Ship just went up like a firework. And the stern section is sinking first. Goodbye. It looks like the bow section is just going to be floating up there for a little bit. We'll see though. Right down the middle though. Broke her back. Well, I will keep sailing around the, the area and I will get back to you guys when I've made contact with any more Japanese vessels. Well, it is currently March 12th, 1943, and we've been sailing around here for about 10 days, and honestly, we've had no contacts whatsoever, so I think it's probably time to uh, go ahead and head back towards Australia. Uh, we're about halfway depleted in fuel, and it is a fairly long journey. I mean, let's see, it's, I mean, over 27, 2,700 nautical miles, so uh, we have quite a journey ahead of us to get back home. Uh, I will cut through some high traffic areas, maybe, so we will try to uh, dispose of our last two torpedoes um, if the opportunity arises, but I think it's a good time to head home. We have been out at sea for, let me see, I have it written down, we left on January 23rd and it is now March 11th, so we've been out for quite a while. So let's go ahead and move on home. And by the time we get home, let's just sail past Rebol. I mean, this journey is going to be extremely long. And bam. 3,000 nautical miles, more or less. Let's see how long that's going to take us. 309 hours. Alright, so you can do the math to translate that into days. I don't really feel like it right now. But, let's go ahead and, uh, well, we'll go ahead and start chugging along, heading home. Let's go ahead and get rid of all this on our map. So, we did a pretty, it was a very successful patrol, uh, even without using our last two torpedoes. We sunk a fleet carrier for one, and then we ended up sinking three light cruisers. So, the Japanese Navy has taken a pretty big hit at my hands so uh, and just wait till I get a new boat oh boy they're gonna really feel it this time so uh, we'll sail past Rabal and everything and hopefully we'll detect some uh, a nice lone merchant ship just begging for two mark 14 torpedoes but uh, as I said we've expended everything else our hull is pretty damaged 28 and also why haven't they repaired our anti-aircraft gun I don't know why oh regardless um, it's really time to uh, head on back, I think. Uh, I The crew's exhausted. 
I'm exhausted. And, uh, we're just, uh, in need of some R&R. &R. Also, I'm excited to see what new boat I get. <laughs> I'm being 100% honest. But I do think we'll probably get an opportunity to launch our last two torpedoes down here. So, I will, uh, keep you guys updated. Well, just a short update. It seems like uh, there was nothing that wanted to come out and play. I, I sailed up this little channel in Rabol a little bit, and then I sailed along the coast of Bougainville and kind of came, skirted around Shortland Island here, and still no contact. So uh, we're just going to keep on heading home. Uh, it's still a long journey. We have less than half of our fuel supply left, so hopefully we can make it home on that. I, I do think we will be able to, though. Um, but I should probably check before we uh, go ahead and sail all that way. So let's see. Maximum range. Maximum range of current speed is. Oh yeah, I think we should be fine. Oh yeah, definitely. We have uh, plenty of fuel to make it home. So uh, the next time you see me, I will either be being bombed by a Japanese aircraft or I will be home in Brisbane. So I'll see you guys in a bit. And here we are. Home sweet home, sort of. Well, uh, temporary home, I suppose, in Australia. Those are those two cruisers that are always conjoined. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, dock here in good old Brisbane. See, and uh, in patrol. Do you want to dock? Yes, I do. So, let's take a look here. We uh, picked up the downed aviators, which was the start of our patrol, and then we uh, ended up sinking the aircraft carrier in between this, and we completed all of our obje other objectives. We ended up sinking four merchant ships and four warships, which is the one fleet carrier and three light cruisers, for a total of 61,308 tons, which is pretty damn good. We left on January 23rd, and we got back, I think, uh, late May, or no, late March, I apologize. So, let's go ahead and click next. And, oh boy, we got another medal. We got the Navy Cross, how about that, to Commander John Smith. For extraordinary heroism as commanding officer of the USS Sailfish during the seven war patrols of that vessel, the Navy Board of Decorations and Medals awards the Navy Cross to Commander Jan John Smith. Um, after seven patrols of command, I think even after five, you would be uh, done. I, I've, um, I think the... It was mostly four. After four war patrols, the commander would go off to do training or something like that, uh, and the occasional five would get through. But, uh, yeah, we are definitely <laughs> pushing the limit here. All right. Shiny new submodels are constantly rolling off the assembly line as the war effort ratchets it up. Due to your performance, you've been placed in line to receive one of the newer models of the, as they arrive to base. You could, however, turn it down if you prefer the current model. Do you wish to take a new summary? Yes, please. You have been given command of a new sub. Awesome. I wonder what it is. During the past months, oh. we've made good progress in the Solomons, despite the desperate Japanese resistance and attempts of repelling our forces. Until August, different attempts were made by the Japanese to bring reinforcements to New Georgia, and several small naval battles were fought in Kula Gulf and in Vula Gulf, with the U.S. Navy managing to push them back. With us controlling the sea, the Japanese had to stop sending reinforcements to New Georgia, which made our advance easier. So by the end of August, fighting on the island was over. During September, the advance of the Allied troops through Kolombagara and Vela Lavala Islands intending to push the enemy to the north was progressing quite steadily. By the end of the month, the Japanese started evacuating both islands. In the beginning of October, Solomon Islands were completely under our control. Woo! Alright, so March 27th, 1943. So that patrol pretty much lasted, uh, oh boy, two months. So, awesome. Let's see what kind of sub we got. A tambor class. Oh boy. So I got what I've wanted. My six forward torpedo tubes and I have four aft. Beautiful. It has, oh, we're the USS Trout. I'll have to read up on this boat a little bit. But yes, yeah, six forward torpedo tubes, which is definitely going to be much appreciated, especially when attacking convoys and such. Uh, the extra torpedoes will come in handy. Let's see here. So let's check our equipment. We have, we want the improved SD radar. 
and the measure 32 paint scheme but this was adopted late in 1943 so we will wait on that machine gun we'll, have, we'll put the twin 20 millimeter on and uh, torpedoes are good everything else should be fine and uh, I'll adjust the crew I'm sure we have quite a few promotions yeah we have quite a few promotions and three Asiatic metal campaigns or <laughs> Asiatic Pacific campaign medal. Jesus, I am really tired. I apologize for that. Uh, reading is really hard. Alright, so we got our new boat, which is what I've been wanting, and let's see where we're going. Oh my god, we're patrolling off of New Guinea again. I've thought about transferring um, Southwest Pacific and South China Sea. I would probably transfer to Task Force 315171. Uh, not sub pack. Sub pack is based out of Pearl Harbor, and I want to save that for uh, later. Um, but we'll see. It's just I've been going to the same areas kind of frequently, but with a new boat, it might make it a little more spicy. Anyway, thank you all for watching and putting up with me. I apologize for the last couple of episodes. I haven't been feeling my prime, and honestly, I've been a little, uh, a little burnt out. But uh, after once I have this new boat, it should be a little more exciting. Um, Anyway, I again, thank you all for watching as always, um, and I'll see you guys on the next one.